This is part two of a review of rational functions covering AP Precalculus topics 1.7 through 1.11. In this video, we will talk about vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, slant asymptotes, and holes. If you missed part one, you can either click the link that appears in the upper right hand corner or find the link in the description. If you appreciate this content, please don't forget to hit the like button. For each of the following rational functions, identify and label any values of x where the function has a hole or a vertical asymptote. Holes and vertical asymptotes both come from factors in the denominator. If the factor cancels out completely, it leads to a hole. If the factor remains, it gives you a vertical asymptote. For example, the x plus 4 cancels out. So that means a hole. A hole at x equals negative 4. The x minus 1 in the denominator does not get canceled out. So that gives you a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote at x equals 1. I don't feel like writing out vertical asymptote over and over again, so I'm just going to write it like this. In number 21, we see this factor of x minus 3 in the denominator. In fact, there are two of them. The factor of x minus 3 in the numerator will cancel out one of the factors of x minus 3 in the denominator. But because one factor still remains, this gives us a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote at x equals 3. The x minus 8 in the denominator does not cancel out either. So that's another vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote at x equals 8. Number 22. The 2 in the denominator is a constant. Ignore that. But then I see the factor of x. That doesn't cancel out with anything. So that gives us a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Then I see the factor of x minus 7 in the denominator. There are two factors of x minus 7 in the numerator. The one factor in the denominator will cancel out with one of the factors in the numerator. Because the factor in the denominator completely canceled out, that means we have a hole at x equals 7. For number 23, we need to factor first to see what's going on. x squared will factor as x times x. 12 is either going to factor as 3 times 4, or 2 times 6, or 1 times 12. But inner plus outer must equal middle. To get a middle of negative 4x, we will use 2 and 6. We need the inner to be positive 2x and the outer to be negative 6x in order to get the negative 4 middle. In the denominator, x squared will factor as x times x. And then we've got that 36. 36 will either factor as 6 times 6 or 4 times 9 or 3 times 12 or 1 times 36. Inner plus outer must equal middle. To get a middle of negative 12, let's go for 6 and 6. To make a negative 12, we need the inner to be negative 6x and the outer to also be negative 6x. Also, negative 6 times negative 6 equals positive 36, which is what we needed. The factor of x minus 6 in the numerator cancels out one of the factors of x minus 6 in the denominator, but this does not give us a whole because there is still a remaining factor of x minus 6. If you have a factor that does not cancel out in the denominator, it is a vertical asymptote, not a whole. We have a vertical asymptote at x equals 6. Number 24, we have some factoring to do. In the numerator, we have the difference of two squares. 
So this will factor as x plus 3 times x minus 3. In the denominator, first we factor out a common factor of x, then we factor the trinomial. x squared will be x times x. 6 is either going to factor as 2 times 3 or 1 times 6. Inner plus outer must equal middle. The middle is 1x. So let's go with 2 times 3. To get a positive 1 middle, we need a negative 2x inner and a positive 3 outer. I see a factor of x in the denominator that does not get canceled out, so that is a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. I also see a factor of x minus 2 in the denominator. That does not cancel out. So that's another vertical asymptote this time at x equals 2. But then I see this factor of x plus 3 that does get canceled out completely. This means that we have a hole. So there is a hole at x equals negative 3. On number 25, we see the factor of x plus 3 in the denominator. Will this be a vertical asymptote or a whole? Hmm. There are three factors in the denominator, and there are five factors of x plus 3 in the numerator. Since there are more factors in the numerator, when these cancel each other out, the entire denominator will be canceled out. There will be two factors left over in the numerator after this. So, since the entire factor uh, from the denominator got canceled out, that means we have a whole at x equals negative 3. On the other hand, looking at the factor of x minus 5 in the denominator, there are more factors in the denominator than the numerator. That means that all of the factors from the numerator will be canceled out, but some of the factors will survive in the denominator. Specifically, there will be two factors left. If you have a factor that remains in the denominator, that's a vertical asymptote. So we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 5. Write the equation of the horizontal or slant asymptote for each of the following rational functions. When the degree of the numerator and denominator are equal, there is a horizontal asymptote. And it will be y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. So that's going to be y equals one third. Number 27, when the degree of the denominator is greater, there is a horizontal asymptote, and it is always y equals 0. Number 28, when the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator, that's when you have a slant asymptote. So we're going to find the slant asymptote by polynomial long division. Set it up like this. Begin by dividing the leading terms. What is 4x squared divided by x? That will be 4x. I recommend that you line up your x terms like this. Take the term that you just found and multiply by the binomial in the front. So 4x times x is 4x squared. These should always match. 4x times 2 is 8x. Then you subtract. These cancel out. Negative 3x minus 8x is negative 11x. And bring down the plus 5. At this point, we basically start over. Divide the leading terms again. What is negative 11x divided by x? Well, that's negative 11. Put that here. 
At this point, we already know the answer. The slant asymptote is going to be y equals 4x minus 11. However, let's follow through and practice our long division skills. Take your negative 11 and multiply. Negative 11 times x is negative 11x, and negative 11 times 2 is negative 22. Then you subtract. These cancel out, of course, but then we have 5 minus negative 22. So that's really 5 plus 22, so that is 27. That's your remainder, and for a long division problem, you add it like this. We put plus 27 over x plus 2. So if the directions were to simply divide using long division, all of this would be the answer. However, we were asked to find the slant asymptote. And the slant asymptote is just y equals 4x minus 11. Don't forget to include the y equals part. In number 29, we again have the situation where the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the denominator. So again, we will have a slant asymptote, so it's time to set up the long division. Set it up like this, and then begin by dividing your leading terms. x to the third power divided by x squared is x. Line up your x terms. Next, multiply by the term you just found. x times x squared is x to the third power. These will always match. x times x, that's x squared. x times 3 is 3x. And then you subtract. These terms cancel, and then we have negative 2x squared minus x squared, which is negative 3x squared. 4x minus 3x is 1x, or simply x. And then we just have the negative 1 all by itself. And then we sort of start over. Divide the leading terms again. Negative 3x squared divided by x squared is simply negative 3. All right, line up your constant terms. At this moment, to be clear, we know that the slant asymptote is y equals x minus 3. We already know that this is going to be the answer. However, let's finish the long division just for good practice. We will need these skills for other problems in the future. So take the term that you just found, the negative 3, and multiply, distribute across this trinomial. Negative 3 times x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Then you subtract. These terms will cancel each other out, and then we get to x minus negative 3x. So that's like x plus 3x, which is 4x. Negative 1 minus negative 9 is like negative 1 plus 9, so that's positive 8. So this is the remainder, and if this were just a division problem, we would add the remainder on the end, divided by the divisor. However, this is not just a division problem, so we say there is a slant asymptote at y equals x minus 3. For number 30, we need to investigate the degree of the numerator compared to that of the denominator. So let's imagine what will happen to this expression as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. In that case, only the leading term of each factor will matter. So this is going to become 2x times x times x. 
So y will be approaching 2x to the third power over x to the third power. So now we see that the degrees are equal. This is the situation where, yes, there is a horizontal asymptote, and it will be y equals the ratio of the leading coefficients. So that's 2 over 1, which is 2. So we have a horizontal asymptote, which is y equals 2. For number 31, we again must discover the leading term of the numerator and denominator so we can compare degrees easily. As x approaches infinity or negative infinity, only the x will matter, not the plus 4. So we have negative 3x squared times x, so that's negative 3x to the third power. In the denominator, as x approaches infinity or negative infinity, only the x and the x will matter, not the plus 1, not the minus 1. So this is x squared times x to the third power. That's going to be x to the fifth power. When the degree of the denominator is greater, there is always a horizontal asymptote, and it is y equals 0 every time. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.